The Rip Curl Pro Surf Classic comes to Bells Beach. Yes, that world famous surfing beach down on the Great Ocean Road. And it is always associated with Easter down here in our Geelong region. It brings together the world's best surfers, both male and female. Petula Patterson, who was a student at Oberon High School, talks to us here on News Geelong regarding the 2010 Rip Curl Classic and a special sign-off from a special lady, a world champion. We're from our great city of Geelong, here on News Geelong. Welcome back to News Geelong on this Good Friday. Of course, our little friend Easter Bunny and his Easter eggs. One more sleep, kids, and he will be there. Animals have worked alongside Australians in war for over 100 years. The A for Animals is an exhibition on loan from the Australian War Memorial in Canberra, currently on display at the National War Museum in Geelong, as Andrea Cosa reports. Thanks, Graham. I'm here at the National War Museum in Geelong, a part of the A to Z of Animals in War exhibition, and it's also a part of the Easter School Holiday Program. I'm talking to Gordon Johnston, director of the National Wool Museum, and we're here today at A is for Animals and A to Z of Animals in War. So Gordon, if you could just tell us a little bit about the exhibition and why people would come, should come and see it. Love to. Um, the exhibition comes from the National War Memorial in Canberra. We're the only venue in Victoria to have the exhibition. Basically what it does is it looks at animals in conflict across the ages. So it looks at the First World War and a little bit earlier, right through until our current uh, engagements in Afghanistan. So you've got everything there from horses, Simpson and his donkey, right through to um, bomb detection dogs as well. What are the... What are some of the standout stories that people about the animals that people will find most interesting, do you think? Clearly Simpson and his donkey. I think everyone knows the story of John Simpson who went out on his donkey to save people during the First World War. There's also lovely stories about um, Driver, who's a little terrier dog who used to go into the trenches to clear out rats. And speaking of rats, the British actually came up with an idea of putting little time bombs into rat carcasses and then actually putting those into trenches. And we have that as well. From inside the National Wool Museum in Geelong, Andrea Cosa for News Geelong. Back to you, Graham. Thank you, Andrea. The Marshall Railway Station is upgrading car parking space that will com make commuting easier for Geelong people in its region, as Merrill Friend reports. We're here at the Marshall Station where there's going to be a new 300 car park and also a bike cage for 30 bikes. They're upgrading the public walkways and lighting and CCTV cameras to cater for the increasing numbers of commuters to Melbourne. It's not just great news for commuters, great news for residents around here as we've just found out ourselves. It's very difficult to get a car park here and many, many people are uh, parking their cars around residential areas. So we've just announced a quadrupling of car parks here at Marshall, so from 100 to 400. Uh, but importantly, we've also secured another 600 car, a land, sorry, for another 600 car parks here. So eventually there'll be a thousand additional car parks. But uh, the work is behind us is um, centered around the building of 300 car spaces here, as well as some upgrading to some pedestrian access and importantly, um, a bike cage, which will also cater for the people that, that uh, ride bikes to uh, stations and then commute to Melbourne. And um, I'm understanding that there is talk of another station, per perhaps in Warren Ponds as part of the Armstrong Creek development. That's correct. The Armstrong Creek development has identified another very large station, some around 2,000 car parks. So it's, uh, it's of the size of Geelong. If you look at Geelong Station, it's, a, it's around that size in terms of car park capacity. And that would be in the Warren Ponds area around Gazapur Road. It's certainly identified there. It's certainly something that's the attention of the government. I know the Minister is well aware of it. I've been talking to him incessantly about uh, the need for planning around that, the securing of the land for uh, the future because it clearly as uh, everyone in Geelong knows this is a big growth area so the future is is certainly another station over here but the immediate one about catering for the some 80 percent of increase in patronage in the last four years an incredible amount of people are using public transport and we need to in, make it as easy as possible to do that as and also alleviate some of the concerns that the local residents have about car parking. So it's making it easier for the passengers and the residents, but also safer as well. You're getting more lighting and CCTV cameras in. Very true. 
Very true. And and safety is an issue. I mean, clearly people want to want to be comfortable. Uh, a lot of it is around perceptions, but uh, it is important that lighting's upgraded. The CCT uh, uh, TVs will be upgraded uh, and improved, uh, as well as as I say, the access and egress from here will also be improved. So overall, I think it's a wonderful package for Marshland, and it's just it, it keeps. We've had more services. We've had the the uh, the um, uh, p platform lengthened. Um, and now we're, we're expanding the car park and people are voting with their feet, they're using it, it's very popular and, and hopefully with the, uh, the, th the securing of a thousand car spaces we keep ahead of the growth now. So with the increase of all these passengers travelling up to Melbourne by train, I believe there's over 7,000 new seats as well. There is, I, I, that's over the regional services, I'm, I'm certainly not claiming the 7,000 here for Geelong, uh, but we are expanding those services and there's certainly will be more trains coming online, as we can see the train behind us, or hear the train behind us here, um, but there are some 7,000 seats across the major regional lines and we will continue to invest. We're not saying it's perfect, but we certainly continue to invest and improve. And from behind me, where the work started for the new car park at Marshalls Station, Merrill Friend for News Geelong. The Impetus Youth Awards is an initiative by the City of Greater Geelong that aims to recognise and celebrate young people. In particular, the awards recognise those who have made significant contributions to education, community work, sport, culture, the arts and the environment. The awards form part of the National Youth Week with winning category prizes being awarded at a ceremony on April 15, 2010. Meryl Friend reports. The City of Greater Geelong's Impetus Youth Awards will be announced on the 15th of April at the Geelong Conference Centre. Some 90 nominations have been made for over 13 different categories and their awards. And we're joined with our Mayor Councillor John Mitchell. Um, Councillor, the Impetus Youth Awards, uh, the nominations have all been put up, I believe there's 90 or so, and they're going to be announced in April. Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, the 15th of April at 6pm at the Geelong Conference Centre, the Impetus Youth Awards, uh, uh, 13 categories, so uh, a number of different youth, young people will, will receive awards. Uh, the awards are for leadership, uh, you know, in, in a lot of different areas, education, uh, uh, in the community and those types of things. So um, there's also uh, group awards as well as individual awards. So it's a great night, great night for the youth. And this is its third year. What sort of uh, people have we had come out from uh, behind the scenes in Geelong so far? Well, just on saying that, we've had a, a broad range of people that, that have won these awards, but the reality to it all is we had it at City Hall last year and it has outgrown City Hall, so it's now at the Geelong Conference Centre. So, so 90 nominations is a lot of nominations. Uh, the police were nominated one year. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different uh, different youth groups and different people that are nominated for these awards and you know um, the uh, the winners get five hundred dollars uh, to go towards tuition or study or or to a charity or whatever else that they can uh, you know they can come up with so uh, um, you know it's it's a it's a great night uh, it really there's a really a lot of energy in the room and uh, it's great to see young people achieving well, that's right, because the youth often get a pretty bad rap in the media but of course there's with ninety nominations there's plenty of them out there doing a lot for the community. Oh, look, it's like everything, isn't it? A small minority uh, um, uh, make it tough for everyone else. But look, it's, it's, it, look, kids are kids, young people are young people. You know, my philosophy on life is remember when you were young, you know, were you a saint? I don't know, I certainly wasn't. So, uh, you know, let's encourage our youth and let's, uh, and let's you know, and these, these awards do that. Uh, let's encourage them, let's, uh, let's get behind them and, uh, and, um, and uh, you know, Ge Geelong, News, News Geelong is doing a great job in uh, putting this to air because... Uh, Good news stories uh, sometimes don't make it to air and this is certainly a good news story for the young people of Geelong. Merrill Friend, News Geelong. Thank you Merrill. You're with News Geelong here on this Good Friday as we go to a break and return with sport and weather after this. <laughs> 